गुड मॉर्निंग इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द प्लान नर्सरी टेक्निक एंड इन दैट वी हैव स्टडीड द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ नर्सरीज एज वेल एज द बेसिक रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ नर्सरी इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द नेक्स्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट अस्पेक्ट ऑफ प्लान नर्सरी इंडस्ट्री दैट इज प्रोपोगेशन मेथड्स इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट the propagation types of propagation that is seed or sexual propagation and the second important type that is vegetative propagation now this vegetative propagation is of two types natural vegetative propagation and artificial vegetative propagation now what is the definition of propagation propagation it is the process of creating a new plant and it is also defined as multiplication and reproduction of plant so in propagation we are going to create a new plant by using either the seed or sexual propagation method and a sexual that is vegetative propagation method in seed propagation the seeds are used as a source for propagation and for multiplication of plants and these seeds are formed by pollination and fertilization by union of male and female gametes in vegetative propagation we are using this is also called as asexual method of propagation in that case we are using a plant part may be stem leaf and roots or some other modified structures of plant as a reproducing agent or propagating agent one by one we will look after these two methods that is first one seed propagation or sexual propagation now in seed propagation or sexual propagation after pollination and fertilization the seeds of male and female gametes the seeds are formed and these seeds are used as a propagating agent now this seed propagation has several advantages as well as some disadvantages uh, we can also call it as merits and demerits of sexual or seed propagation now in seed propagation we are using the seeds and that is why it is easiest and least expensive method why it is easiest because we are just collecting the seeds and propagating the seeds with the help of soil as well as the water so in seed propagation we just use the seeds and so it is easiest and least expensive method uh by using the seeds when we are propagating the plant we are maintaining the diversity because we are selecting a good quality of seeds again the seeds which are used they are long lived productive and have greater tolerance towards adverse environmental conditions climatic conditions and as well as to the diseases there is one more important feature of seeds that is the seeds have dormancy period uh, or it is also called as resting period so whenever the seeds gets mature generally we keep the seeds uh, store the seeds in dry conditions either by using uh, uh, ash or the leaf of neem we are storing the seeds so this is what is the dormancy period or resting period of the seeds and after resting period we we are using the seeds for propagation so but because of the dormancy or because of this particular characters we can store the seeds for longer duration as well as as per the requirement whenever we need the seeds we can use the seeds so for future use as per the requirement again when we see is uh, use the seeds we can inculcate or incorporate the hybridization or hybrids so by breeding uh, we can manipulate some of the important characteristics or we can restore some of the important characteristics and the hybrids can be made uh, prepared and these hybrids can also be used with vigorous and some important good quality so as it is possible to control the seeds and regulate the characteristics also the seeds uh, are important one Uh, seeds are also uh, important source of asexual propagation and finally it does not require skill or any specific technique as in a seed propagation we just using the seeds uh, dip into the soil and add some water after that the seeds start germination so there is no any skill required for the human being on the other side it has some demerits or disadvantages and these are the plants propagated are not identical that means by using the seeds when we grow the plant and it flowers after flowering 
there may be some manipulative uh, mutations or modifications in the seed uh, in the plant so the desired characters are not retained or the plants as well as are not identical the plant shows some variations then these plants require longer time of flowering as we are starting with the seeds so seed has to germinate so initially for there may be some period for germination after that the radical and plumule may grows the roots and shoots are developed then leaves are developed and then plant starting uh, the photosynthesis process or energy uh, generation process and after that the plants um, take the growth so that entire process requires longer time and because of that the flowering is also require a longer time dormancy on one side it is the benefit that we can store the seed and use the seed as per our requirement but on the other side it has a demerits that it uh, the germination rate is low also for seed the handling is important part if properly not handled the seed may lose their viability or germination abilities and in that seeds the quality of mother plant may not be retained because the seeds are exposed to different environmental conditions as well as adverse condition there may be some chemical changes and because of that the mother characters are not retained that is why we have to select a good quality of seeds and for that there is some criteria so first one fruits of desired character whenever we are going to select the seed for propagation we have to select the fruit of desired characters so we need a specific type of characters in the seed and that is why we have to select that characters or desired characters the fruit must be fully mature vigorous and from healthy plant again while propagating by uh, seeds we have to select the uh, study the climatic climatic requirements so all the plants have their uh, specific climatic requirements and depending on the climatic requirement there may be growth or vigorous growth of plant so for that we have to identify or we have to study the climatic requirement of seed as well as the climatic requirement of the area where we are going to cultivate this plant uh, this is one more important thing that is purchase from reliable source so nowadays there are several vendors in a market and they are providing the seeds so the reliable source or reliable vendor is essential Uh, otherwise we may lose our entire crop or entire season the disease free plant is one more requirement and dry seeds are essential so this is what about the uh, seed propagation now the next point is vegetative propagation vegetative propagation is the method in which the plant part either leaves stem or roots are used and this vegetative propagation is generally preferred in flowering fruiting and ornamental plant so whenever we wish to establish a nursery of ornamental plants or fruit plant in that case we can go for vegetative propagation as the seed germination or seed propagation requires longer duration as well as it may not retain the desired characteristics characteristics of mother plant in that case we can go for vegetative propagation where we can select a healthy plant and we can use the vegetative part of healthy plant or desire a uh, plant of desirable characteristics and use that for propagation so that we can achieve our target in a seed there is one important feature that is totipot uh, in plant sorry in plant there is one important feature that is totipotency and this totipotency is the ability of the plant cell or tissue to germinate or grow into a new entire new plants so uh, this is important feature of plants and that we can use in vegetative propagation so whatever the part either the leaf stem or uh, roots as well as any single uh, cell of the plant has the ability to uh, grow and germinate into entire new plant so that totipotency is important character which is used in vegetative propagation now this vegetative propagation is of two kinds natural vegetative propagation and artificial vegetative propagation natural vegetative propagation that means there is no involvement of human being so natural 
component a natural part of the plant is used in the propagation and in case of artificial vegetative propagation this artificial or human induced method of propagation where human interference human intervention intervention is essential in natural method we can use the natural part natural uh, uh, structure of the plant and use that structure directly for propagation and in artificial we have to modify the plant part and then we can use the part for vegetative propagation by using natural propagation we can grow or cultivate many herbaceous plants uh, these parts may remain dormant in adverse environmental conditions and this can be used to develop the advantageous roots on the other side the artificial vegetative propagation is the method where the human involvement is there so frequently employed to give rise to new or sometimes novel plant and reproduction carried out by human in the field as well as in the laboratory the natural vegetative propagation involves several uh, methods or several modifications so these are all the modified parts of the plants which are used as a, a propagation agent so in that the runners sucker bulb bulbs are of two types tunicated and non tunicated or scaly bulb then tubers combs rhizome bulbils stolon and offset so all these are modified part of plant the runner sucker bulbs all these are modifications in the plant and plant have naturally modified themselves for their reproduction or for their propagation so all these different modifications helps the plant to survive in nature or by natural method one by one we will look after this the first one runner so the runners we look uh, in the examples like uh, cynodon then hydrocotyl then uh, uh, strawberry the runner is the modification of stem so the stem becomes thin long slender and this arises from the axils of leaves the runners run parallel on the surface of plant so this this modified long slender part branch of the plant runs parallel on the surface of soil this uh, slender part has nodal and internodal region and from that nodal region it start producing new leaves as well as from the nodal region it start producing the advantageous roots and with the help of these advantageous root as well as from the nodal region the shoot and roots are developed and it uh, develops into entire new plant then second one sucker it is like the runner but in a runner the plant grows horizontally on the surface of soil whereas in sucker this is modification which is underground so from the underground nodal region the new branch is developed so the suckers are the modification in plant where from the underground nodal region a new branch is developed so this type of um, uh, propagating uh, material or modified material we can find in the examples like chrysanthemum or sansevieria then third one bulbs so bulb is modification of stem Uh, where the stem is reduced and this reduced stem develop into leaf like structure and from the terminal bud the bud which which are present at the tip from that terminal bud the aerial shoots are develop so bulbs are of two types tunicated bulb and non tunicated bulb uh, tunicated that is example uh, example of tunicated is onion and non tunicated are scaly the example is garlic and lily now this in onion as well as in garlic the stem is reduced it is modified it is reduced and from the reduced stem the bud the terminal bud is useful for aerial shoot and the rest of the buds from which the scales or leaf bases are formed and from the leaf bases it start or modified part so in onion the thick and fleshy leaves arranged concentrically concentrically that is they are arranged towards the center and bulb is covered by membranous papery scales so outermost bulb outermost bud of the uh, onion we can find that it is membranous or it is papery 
whereas in scaly leaves or in uh, scaly bulb the bulbs are not concentric they are not moving towards the center and they are not membranous instead the scales or modified scales which are thick they are loosely arranged and they are overlapping which helps in propagating then the next one tuber the good example of tuber is potato so on potato we can find the nodal region or we can call it as eyes and these eyes can be used as a propagating agent so we just have to cut down the piece including the eyes and we can use as a propagating agent so this fleshy part inside uh, which is the storage region in potato we know that it is the source of starch so the food is stored in potato it also shows the nodes and internodes these nodes and internodes are not distinct but to the nodal region we call that eyes at nodal region the scaly leaves are pre present and these nodal regions are used or the eyes are used as a propagating agent the next example is comb or no, next method is comb in comb the example is gladiolus as well as amorphophyllus where again the stem is modified it is condensed and it also consists the nodes and internodal region as well as the scaly leaves and from the apical bud the uh, axillary bud it has the apical as well as some axillary buds then next rhizome the good example is garlic as well as uh, sorry example is ginger as well as canna canna and uh, ferns so this is also underground modified stem it grows underground in the soil it has also nodal and nodal uh, internodal region and from the nodal region it start sprouting so the leaves are uh, from the nodal region and we can use the small piece of this as a propagating agent next one bulbils uh, so bulbils are uh, the modified part and these are generally present in the axil of leaves so the branch of stem and the leaves in that it forms the axis axis of leaf as well as axis of stem and in that these some modified structures developed and these are called as bulbils so these these are uh, either modification of a leaf bud a leaf or as well as the floral bud and from that it forms a circular uh, multicellular structure and these structures uh, that is bulbil which is used as a propagating agent initially the bulbils are developed on the plant when they get mature the bulbils get mature they fall down on the soil and they start germinating next one stolon it is again like runner or sucker so it is a type of uh, modification of runner uh, initially uh, in runner it grows horizontally on the surface of soil in sucker it start producing from the base of the soil and the stolons they are again from the ba uh, basal region of plant where from the basal region it grows Uh, vertically in the initial level and then when it grows vertical for some period and then it bends down uh, horizontally towards the soil so the initial level where it comes upward then grows straight and then comes down so likewise the stolons are developed uh, and when the region of stolon or when the growing region touches to the surface of soil from that region it start producing the advantageous roots the examples are nephrolepis and mentha and the last one uh, that is offset offset is example of uh, aquatic plant generally uh, the water hyacinth or uh, we call it as jaloperni uh, the name is ecornia as well as in pistia we can find the offsets so here in this diagram we can find out the offset uh where this is the modification of aquatic plant from the uh, nodal region or from the basal region of this plant the new stem like portion develops or grows and from that 
region or next nodal region the new plant will be developed so this is what is the example of offset the examples are ecornia and pistia it develops from main stem it grows in water for some distance and after that it produce the new plant from the nodal region so this these are all the methods of natural vegetative propagation so the first one runner then sucker then bulbs tuber stolon offset all these are the methods of vegetative propagation where naturally growing modified part of plant is used in a propagation